Welcome back horror fans, Pumpkin Claw here. I am a big fan of nature horror. Immense animals wreaking havoc on those who are unfortunate enough to discover their existence piques my interest and draws me to a film. Arguably, the most famous is Bruce from Jaws. As Peter Benchley said in his interview on writing the book, what would happen if a creature like this came into shore and just wouldn't go away? Now what was Bruce? Was it just a big shark that, as Matt Hooper said, staked a claim on Amity Island? Or was something special about this beast that still haunts our waking nightmares every time we step into a natural body of water? Let us first look at Bruce's size. According to shark characteristics, Bruce should be considered a female, as female great whites grow to larger proportions. But I am not going to refer to Bruce as a specific gender, he or she. With this video is to theorize what Bruce was, either a large great white on a feeding frenzy or a rogue, a freak of nature, a monster that evolution forgot. There are two very well documented and followed great whites in the western hemisphere. There is Mary Lee, a 16 foot 3500 pounder who comes in and out of the northern shores, spotted all the way down to North Carolina and up near Montauk most recently. Then there is Deep Blue. She is possibly 20 or 21 feet in Mexico. She has a very well known YouTube video showing her swimming around an insane diver. There are also unsubstantiated claims of even larger sharks spotted. A few years ago there was a helicopter scout off the coast of Australia who captured a picture of what they estimated to be a 7 meter, approximately 23 foot great white. It was so big a helicopter could see it submerged. So the concept of a 25 foot great white shark is not a complete stretch. There are also wild theories that a megalodon still roam the deeper trenches of the ocean. Now as a horror fan, I would love nothing more than to speculate that there are 50 to 70 foot great whites lurking in the blackest parts of our oceans. And Steve Alton's famous book Meg novelized the concept and is coming to screens next year with Jason Statham as the main character Jonas. But in all honesty, despite the made up facts from Discovery Channel, it is highly unlikely and a lot of scientific data shows a shark that size would not be able to survive the current oceanic conditions. But here's to imagination. Maybe Bruce had gigantism, it was the Andre the Giant of sharks. Though Andre was a gentle giant and Bruce was anything but gentle. Gigantism is usually caused by a tumor on the pituitary gland and could have been passed on through a mutated gene, which may explain the succession of killer sharks in the sequels that stalked the Brody family. It is interesting to think that Bruce is a shark with an aggressive disease, changing its morphology, but more like island gigantism, which would explain Bruce's size caused from a combination of black and predators and aggressive territorialism, which is exactly the theory that Hooper describes to Brody before they go out looking for it at night. Next, let us explore the ferocity of the shark. I can get into intricate detail about the shark's diet and possibly be refuted in the comments section, but let us all agree that Bruce ate a lot over the few days the movie encompasses. Killing Christy first, then Alex Kittner and Pippet, the estuary man and his final victim Quint. I do not think that Bruce ate Ben Gardner. I theorize that Bruce attacked Ben's boat with him escaping to the bottom compartment for safety. When Bruce bit through the hole, either scaring Ben to death or Ben drowned. I think his missing eye is from a fish that made its way into the exposed hole and ate it. Bruce hunted and consumed four people and one dog within a 72 hour period. The 1916 events the movie was based on about a great white that stalked the Jersey Shore killed four people in a two week period. Obviously right there we can discern that Bruce is an extreme case for a shark. Also the matter that Bruce purposely chased the three men on the orca into open water. Why would a hunting predator leave a heavily populated island with an easy food source to go after a group of three men? Because it had an agenda to destroy these three specific men who were charged with its destruction. This shows a level of malevolence that is not seen in a predator of natural origins. On to the power of Bruce. In this film we witness Quint attaching three barrels to the shark which still proceeds to submerge fully to the bottom, pulling the barrels under with it. This is not only to the shock of Hooper 
who, when asked by Brody if he had ever seen a shark do that, quickly replied, no. But also to the complete surprise of Quint, who stated only minutes prior it would not be able to go under with three barrels. The sheer power of Bruce is also displayed with the two men on the dock and the famous holiday roast. With many interesting documentaries and talks on great whites, it is no secret the power of their bite and speed. Many shark attack victims state that when they were bitten, they didn't even feel the bite, more the mass of the shark hitting them, saying it felt like they were struck by a truck. But an average shark pulling apart a sturdy wooden dock is something to be speculated and doubted. Would a shark attached to a hook and chain be able to forcefully remove half a section of a raised dock? In my opinion, I do not think that it is possible and feel that this is due to the immense, if not freakish power of Bruce that enabled it to accomplish this. As a creature of nature horror, I feel Bruce cannot be categorized, that it was something else, a beast risen from the depths with a hostile intent to cause havoc and pain on those who tempted to get in its way. I think that Bruce was the embodiment of the biblical of Leviathan. In quotes, when the Leviathan is hungry, he sends forth from his mouth a heat so great so to make all the waters of the deep boil, and if he would put his head into paradise, no living creature would endure, a pure monster from the watery void. Without passion and without logic, it lives to kill. It is as if God created the devil and gave him jaws. I would like to thank Lee Goatboy Hartnip for allowing me to use some of his fantastic artwork to make this video, and also my Facebook family at the Jaws Group for inspiring me on the subject. What do you think Bruce was? Was he a shark or something more evil? Comment in the section below and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Stay scared. 